All right, guys, in this video, what I want to do is compare with you the process for finding the LCD for fractions like this versus finding the LCD for rational expressions like this. Now, the reason why I don't cover this video is because students struggle with fractions. And if you're still struggling with fractions, this understanding of the LCD and operations with fractions is going to be helpful. And if you're working on polynomials, one of the more confusing parts is, well, if I can do fractions with numbers, how do I find the LCD with polynomials? Let's go and compare the two problems for how to find the LCD. Now, hopefully you remember at least like the golden rule with fractions. Whenever you are adding and subtracting fractions, you have to have a common denominator. So we cannot just simply add across, right? This is not going to be two fifths. That is not the answer. The only way we can add these is by finding a common denominator. Now, the fastest, easiest way to be able to find the common denominator is just to multiply your two denominators. So in this example, my LCD is going to be a two times three, which is equal to a six. So what I want to try to do is say, well, how can I get my denominators to be six? Well, since two times three is equal to six, to get on the left hand side, all I need to do is multiply by three to get six. Now, again, we need to make sure we're producing what we call equivalent fractions. So whatever we do in the denominator, we have to do in the numerator. And the same thing on the right-hand side. If I want three to become a six, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by two, right? So three times two is six. And then again, I'm going to do that on the top as well. So now when I go ahead and simplify this, I get a three over six plus a two over six. And now you can see that the denominators are exactly the same. And three plus two is just going to equal five. So you apply the operation and you get a final answer of five over six. Let's go and take a look at now at polynomials, because what does x plus two and x plus three have in common kind of gets a little bit more confusing. So we can kind of go back to that lazy method. The fastest, easiest way to find a common denominator, not always the LCD, is just to simply multiply your two denominators. So in this case, I can just say my LCD is going to equal a X plus two times an X plus three. Now you can leave it in factored form or you could actually multiply it out. But what's really helpful later in later mathematics is going to be simplifying these expressions. I'd recommend leaving them in the factored form, at least for now. Now, again, if this is my LCD and I already have an X plus two in my denominator and I want to produce an X plus two times X plus three, all I simply need to do then is multiply that by a X plus three. Now I'm going to use parentheses here so you can see how it kind of gets the same. And I'm going to do that in the top in the numerator as well. And then over here, if I put parentheses around this and I say, all right, I already have an X plus three, but I want to get an X plus three times X plus two. Well, then I'll just multiply by an X plus two over an X plus two. You can see here on my numerator, I'm going to have an X plus three all over my common denominator. And then over here, I'm going to have a X plus two all over again, my common denominator. Now what I simply need to do is again, since the denominators are exactly the same, I'm just going to combine my numerators. Well, again, remember, since we're dealing with variables, I understand it gets confusing with this idea of like LCD, but for the operations, we're just going to combine our X's with our X's and our numbers with our numbers. So X plus X is going to be a two X and three plus two is going to be a five. And again, that's going to be all over our common denominator. So now we have a final answer of two X plus five all over an X plus three times an X plus two. Now, unfortunately, this is not the only way to be able to find the LCD. When you're multiplying your two denominators, that just gives you a common denominator. Now, in these two examples, that did give us the least common denominator. Now, let's go and take a look at two examples where it actually does not produce the least common denominator, and we actually have to apply a different method because this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. Now, in this example, we have a one half over one plus six, and unfortunately, the LCD is not 12. That is not the smallest number that two and six share. The smallest number that both two and six divide into is going to be actually a six. So we could say the LCD is equal to six. Now, sometimes that makes sense to students, and sometimes times it does not. So let's take a look at another way we can understand the LCD. Remember the LCD is the least common denominator, the smallest denominator that they both have in common. If you don't recognize that six is the smallest number that they can both have in common, let's go and actually simplify these by factoring. Now there's nothing I can really do with the one half. However, the six, I can actually factor that down. I can break down the six as a two times three. So what I want you to see here is this denominator has a two. This denominator has a two times a three. Remember, we want them, the denominators to be exactly the same. So what we're going to have to do is multiply by three in the denominator as well as on the numerator. Now what I'll go ahead and get is a three over six plus a one over six. And therefore, now I can apply the operations to the numerator, which is a four over six, which I can now reduce to a two thirds. Now you might say, well, what happens if I used a 12 as my LCD? Well, guess what? It would still work. And actually in this example, it probably wouldn't be that much work. But the reason why I just don't want you to be lazy and multiply the denominators is because when we look at the rational expressions, you can see that's not the same animal. I do not want to multiply an X plus two times an X squared plus five X plus six, and then try to simplify the answer. It gets a little bit more messy dealing with polynomials than it does with numbers. So that's why I showed you this factoring idea. Because again, when we're dealing with polynomials, one thing that we commonly do is factor, 
right? Because factor helps us simplify the expressions to better understand what we're taking a look at. So there's nothing really I can factor with the one over X plus two, but over here, we recognize this as a quadratic and the quadratic we can factor into a product of two binomials. And in this example, I can see that's going to be an X plus two times a X plus three. Trying to go back to this example where I explained this, this denominator is an X plus two. This denominator is an X plus two times X plus three. If I want them to be the same or find the smallest polynomials that they can be the same as, what I will simply do is multiply this by an X plus three in the denominator, as well as an X plus three in the numerator. Now I'll just go ahead and put parentheses around this just so it kind of looks exactly the same. But again, now I can just multiply this. This is an X plus three all over my common denominator. And this is simply just going to be a one over my common denominator. And now that I have common denominators, you can see I can just go ahead and add my numerators all over the common denominator of an X plus three times an X plus two. So hopefully you can see the difference here when dealing with numbers and with polynomials. It's really the same idea and same process, but it does make sure to help to understand what you're doing with fractions so you can not do it with rational expressions. If you need more examples, check out the playlist and resources I have down below or check out the next video I have for you here.